This sucks. What is up, San Antonio Spurs fans? Welcome to TSR Sports. I would rather not be doing this video today. I don't like talking about these things on my channel, but now it's so many players have just recently made a hit and are still dealing with it. Um, news just dropped earlier. The San Antonio Spurs, Derek White, Kelvin Johnson, Demacell, and Thaddeus Young joined the injury report as the 1-9 sweeps across the league. Uh, first and foremost, of course, the most important thing is the health of these players. Hope they all are okay and can have a speed recovery. Should be. They're athletes. They're all VAX, so everything should be good to go there. That being said, we got to look at how's it going to affect the team because I'm a Spurs channel. And missing two of our starters, plus Doug McDermott is, is still out. So actually missing three of our starters, plus Demacell is one of our best players off the bench. Yeah, Thad's out. He's not can really contributing anything to the team, but still don't want anything bad to happen to him. Uh, this is going to hurt the team. One of two things is going to happen. The Spurs are going to lose a lot of games with all these players out, much like the Detroit Pistons lost a lot of games, which they were already bad anyway. Some people may argue we're bad. Or we're going to have a diamond in the rough in Josh Primo or Joe Wieskamp, Joe Mama. Somebody's going to get a ton of minutes and is going to step up for our San Antonio Spurs. And next thing you know, they're going to be an impact player for this team moving forward. But uh, let's get into the article. Let's get into it right now. Uh, there you go. There's a report from Noah uh, Majaro George. And this report comes right on the heels of a report from Andrew Warzanowski stating San Antonio signed veteran combo guard Tyler Johnson to a 10-day contract. And I believe the Spurs signed like, quite a few guys to a 10-day contract. So they're, they're going to try to power through this. While the previously noted quartet of players now joins Doug McDermott in health and safety, there is some good news. It's Devontae K. Cock and Lonnie Walker. I'm sorry. And Lonnie Walker have started comp uh, competition reconditioning. So probably not ready for tomorrow. I think we play the Sixers. I will be calling that game on the channel. Cheap plug. But they should be ready to go next week. Also, uh, aside from brief sits in health and safety, uh, protocols from Jacques Lindale, Jakob Perno, and Jacques Murray, the fully VAX Spurs have mostly avoided one night complications up to this point, but we're getting decimated right now. That's a lot of the NBA is. The Silver and Black must now rely on the bottom of their depth chart to stay afloat in the Western Conference standings as they embark on their final three games of a lengthy road trip. The NBA and MBPA, National Basketball Player Association, Recently agreed on new protocols that allow those players to clear isolation after five days, which means the Spurs could be at full strength as soon as next Tuesday. So that is great news, but still, this sucks. And again, I don't want to do a video on this. I'd really not be just, we've had so many guys go into this, now getting hit with four players, just like that, two starters, and arguably our best player off the bench, who's been starting with other guys out in Devin Massell and playing fairly well. Uh... This sucks. I don't know who our starting lineup is going to be tomorrow, tonight, uh, tomorrow night. DeJounte looked great last night. And I'll talk about last night's game briefly as I wrap things up. DeJounte Murray. Jakob Pertl, uh Oh, I can't imagine we're going to start Trey Jones or Brynn in the starting lineup. Would, would Pop start Brynn? Wow, really? It's Sunday out. Brynn or Trey? I, uh, Devin's out. Um, could Josh Primo start tomorrow? KBD will start. I don't know what we're going to do. Could we go with the, the Jacques, Jacques and Jacques connection? Could Pop start two big men in tomorrow? I don't know. Drew Eubanks a power forward? And uh, Drew's probably not there. I don't know what the heck Pop's going to do with his rotation tomorrow. It should be interesting. And I'll be there uh, cheering him on. Quick uh, side note. I wish I called last night's game, but I was just totally... I was just tired, guys. I was like, you know what? I can't force myself to do a game. It ended up being a very exciting game with... The Spurs having a couple turnovers, I believe, in the last minute, and the Celtics probably should have won the game, but they just they just blew, they blew it. They had one chance and they blew it. Thank goodness. And I have to also say, the I think it was on NBC Sports Boston for me in this area, the Boston announcers suck. Oh my goodness, they weren't biased. They were actually calling the game fairly straight to their credit, but but they called Jacques Lindell, Jakob Pertl at least once in the night. They called Trey Jones and Bryn Forbes, both Derek White, at one point in the same quarter. And they called Devin Vassell, Kelman Johnson. Those are just the ones I caught. Because I was the first three quarters, I was working on a music video for my music channel. And I was watching the game, but doing that. So I wasn't listening so much as watching. And then I was re-listening the fourth quarter. But I heard that a lot throughout the night. And I'm just thinking to myself, this is your job. Yeah, I make mistakes once in a blue moon calling players the wrong name, or I'll say I don't know who that is, but this is your profession. You're a sports caster, sports announcer. And while I don't expect you to know our roster well after mainly the starters, to call Derek White, Derek White, and Bryn Forbes, Derek White, and Trey Jones, Derek White, are you even paying attention to the game? They suck. 
Anyway, if you want to hit the thumbs up, cool. If you don't, I understand because this is a bad news video. Um, one last thing before I close. I am going to keep doing Spurs content, of course, on the channel. But when the Spurs have a four-game week or five-game week, I've decided to just call three games. I don't want to do back-to-backs. And I really like to focus on knowing my music channel. But I've changed my workout. We're working out two times a week. I'm going in earlier at work for an earlier shift. And I've changed my eating habits. And I'm really trying to get healthy this year. And so far, doing a great job. But it's only, you know, January 6th. And uh, I just need to free up the time. Hopefully the Spurs don't have too many weeks where they play five games. I think they are playing five games next week. So that's going to suck with all these players out. But I don't want to call more than three games a week. And I do plan to at least do three games a week moving forward. But that's going to be my cap. I really have a lot of other stuff going on right now that I want to focus on. And it'll still be go Spurs go. I'll still be watching the games even if I'm not calling them. But I'll try to call if I'm calling the they play four games or five games and I'm only calling three. I'll try to call the three biggest matchups, I guess, if you will, like who are the top teams. I don't know. But anyway, thank you all for tuning in. Drop a comment down below what you think about this news. Obviously, it sucks, but I always like talking to you guys about your thoughts on Spurs news. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, go Spurs go!